what's up YouTube welcome back to blazing blooms and today we're going on a garden tour um, so we're in the third week of April now and we want to get out here and get some get some good shots of, of the of the garden this time of year and talk about some things that are looking really good so I'm gonna get behind the camera and start going around from place to place and just talking about some things and well you know, there's new things and things that are coming into season and uh, well actually we'll start right here we're gonna start with these uh, amaryllis bulbs over there these came from uh, uh, my wife's grandmother's house so uh, they've been in the fa her family for quite a while and we brought some of the bulbs over here we originally we had them in the front yard but the, the deer would come by and would just take the flowers off as soon as they would they would come out so we moved them back here so we would have some more time with the flowers and get to enjoy them and uh, so this is the first season in there so i don't expect the blooms to be too great but i expect uh, next season and the season after to be even better um, but we, we really enjoy the amaryllis uh, the smoke bush here is also looking really good uh, the foliage is super dark on it and uh, it hasn't bloomed yet so hopefully hopefully soon we'll see some blooms on it and uh, let's go ahead and jump to the next spot we'll see what else we got going all right here I am now on the back side of that smoke bush where I just started and uh, as you can see this bed is filling up pretty quickly and uh, there's probably there's a few things in here we may remove I've, uh, like right here is a jazz hands lord petalum it struggles to recover after our winters here and uh, I'm just not sure whether we're gonna we're gonna keep it or not um, what else we have there's also this this olive martini here Ely Agnes it's also struggled here um, after the winter time so it may be one of the things that ends up getting removed if it uh, can't uh, establish itself and and turn itself around uh, right in front of it we just planted a pinstamen that's actually the second pinstamen we've planted in this bed here there's another one in the back there um, in red color, in a red color there. I can't remember the name. I'll put it. I'll I'll check it and put it put it in the video. But right in front of it, it's got another jazz hand lord petalum, and it's just it just struggles. It just really really struggles. Uh, let's see what else we have. Right here we have a uh, encore azalea. It, uh, it didn't look too great this year getting into this season, and I think it was probably due to the cold snap uh, in December that we had. It, uh, it had it looking pretty rough. Azaleas normally look pretty bad when, right before they're about to flower, but it looked, it looked extra bad. But now you can see that it's turning around. It's got lots of green leaves all around and uh, the flowers have flowered out. And then uh, our hostas, our hostas are looking good this season. They're coming back. That one on the left is in its third season. I think this is the second season for that one on the right. Two different uh, variegated hostas there side by side. Hostas are great if you have areas with that don't have any um, direct sunlight, only indirect. And so right here, I have one foot, basically one foot of sh shade that runs this backside of this foundation that doesn't get any direct sunlight. But I have found that the hostas seem to do really well. Let's go check out another area. All right, here we are on the other side of the backyard. And I just kind of wanted to show off this side of the uh, landscape where we put the the garden this year so here we've put our our lettuce and our tomatoes back here even some more tomatoes on the back there and some cucumbers are run across the bottom side here so we didn't really we had this large section and we figured that that's the probably the best place to put the garden bed uh, or a large one if we wanted to do one so we just went ahead and stuck it there that lower petal is looking great as well as that uh I can't remember the name of that one right there it's a perennial in this area not perennial it's a deciduous shrub in this area uh, I'll put the name at the bottom it looks awesome right next to it, right next to it it's a great great color contrast in those two shrubs here we got a uh, wine and rose wajilia with the flowers this, this year looking really good this is probably the best it's done this season because I actually just moved it up here last season uh, out of the heat this shrub really needs to be in the, uh, quite a bit of shade it doesn't like being in our direct Sun at all uh, so put it in some dappled light to perform best. Here we have a new planting here. This is a, a hellebore here. Um, we've stuck it right there behind that tree to give it enough shade to to uh, to make it. It doesn't. It likes really shady areas, and then I just think that that foliage looks really good next to the purple heart there. Once it grows in, that'll be too. That'll be a really cool looking area, I think. And then here's a new planting here. This is a um, oak leaf hydrangea, um, ruby slippers. 
so it's a smaller variety of oak leaf hydrangea. That's the second oak leaf we have in our in our landscape. All right, and on this side of the yard we have our rose bushes. This would be the east side of our foundation here. Uh, so they get a lot of the early day sun and not a lot of the late day heat that would blast them. So they seem to do pretty well. This is probably the, definitely the best that they've looked since we've had them. I mean, just stunning and you can smell the just smell the roses just walking past them super cool Let's see these are actually ground covering roses these are drift roses here is what they are so they only get about a foot tall and they get real wide you know, four to six foot wide actually so And here we have our, this is our larger oak leaf hydrangea. That's the uh, original. You can see how many flower heads it has on it this season. It's just absolutely nuts. I can't wait till all that flowers. This is gonna be awesome. Let's see what we got in the front yard. All right, so here I am here in the front yard and uh, wanted to point out these Nandinas here on the left. Those are blush pink Nandinas from the Southern Living Plant Collection. And they are absolutely stunning. I mean, they have so much pop of color for something that you would think is an like, that is evergreen. You would think one consistently consistent leaf color, but this thing is just just such a spectrum of colors. Just super super eye catching in the beds there. Let's go across the across the uh, driveway here and see what we got in these beds over here. So here we got some salvia. This is Victorian salvia. I've got blue salvia there. And then on this side here, I got a little bit of the white. Here. And that really comes up. I planted this here and it'll come up and it'll take the place of the, the blue bonnets. When the blue bonnets are dying out like they are now, I'll have this other color here, the salvia and the salvia, the Victorian salvia. So, always got to keep the color moving. As some stuff dies out, you want to have something else ready to go. But uh, the uh, lamb's ear is looking absolutely great this year. Super deer resistant. And uh, just fun to look at, fun to touch. We got some zinnias in the back there, ready to, almost ready. Got them out here in the sun today. It's a cloudy day, so it's the most sun that the, they, they're going to get. Here we got some more Nandinas on this side actually butted up. Look how tall they are. Alright everybody, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you saw something you like. Maybe give you some ideas for your own landscape. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.